To the right of me, I have Asus's brand new XG35VQ monitor. Now this is a 35 inch 21 by 9 1440p display. And you're probably wondering what makes this 21 by 9 monitor different to all the other ultra wide monitors out there. Well, this has one big benefit and it's the first time I've tried it personally. Asus are calling it ELMB, extreme low motion blur, AKA ultra low motion blur, AKA strobing, which essentially matches a flick of light to the monitor's refresh rate. In this case, since this monitor has 100 Hertz, it will then flick a light 100 times a second. So what you get is less ghosting and easier tracking. Since this was the first time I've tried it, I was blown away by, of course, getting that color redemption out of a VA panel as opposed to a TN panel, but still not missing out on those good response times. Since it does flick one image a second, it's not as subject to noticing ghosting as opposed to a TN panel, which is really fast with its response times, so it doesn't really need strobing at all. This thing, however, when you put on strobing, you can still notice a little bit of ghosting, but it does make tracking so easy. I was surprised on the UFO test, my eyes were just moving with the UFO and I could notice how snappy it was. And in Dota 2, when I was name tracking, it was so easy. So if you're into fast motion objects and you want those gorgeous colors, that gorgeous contrast ratio of a VA panel, but you still want that snappy experience, then ELMB, as Zeus is calling it, is going to give you that. But it's also coupled with a lot of other benefits too. It does support FreeSync. It's got 48 to 100 Hertz support. And not only that, Zeus have added in a feature where it can display the actual FPS live on the monitor itself. So it's an overlay where it has a diagram too. So if you've got an AMD FreeSync graphics card, you can then put it in and notice how your FPS is live on the monitor itself. Though of course, this doesn't work like a river tuner with its FPS display coming from the graphics card. It's just the monitor itself. So if you're not using an Asus FreeSync card, it'll just display a static 100 all the time. Now with all that aside, today I'm gonna to take you guys through the whole nine yards, or should I say the whole 21 by nine yards with the Asus XG35VQ. So let's get on with it. Welcome back to Tech Yes City. This is Brian coming to you guys today with a monitor that's coming in at 770 US. At least that's the price on Amazon. If you're in Australia, it's about 1,050 AUD. So it is relatively well priced compared to the US. Now for this money, you're probably thinking that's expensive for a monitor, but actually for a 35 inch ultra wide monitor with a VA panel, good response times, and we'll get onto that later, it's actually a very good price. I'm surprised at how competitive Azusa coming into the monitor market and of course you get that ROG branding RGB on the back of the monitor and a light underneath which you're able to change the plates on and you can customize a plate yourself. So I decided to write yes on it and I now have yes branding underneath this sexy monitor here. But besides that on the back you've got a DisplayPort 1.2 HDMI 2.0 only in and a HDMI 1.4. Now the DisplayPort will be needed if you want to use the ELMB. It won't work on the two HDMI ports. Also, if you enable the extreme low motion blur, you won't be able to use FreeSync since it does match that strobing to the 100 Hertz specifically. There is also no noticeable flicking. I tested through the Hertz range on my camera, couldn't notice any flicker. So it's flicker free, which is great. The white uniformity as well is very well balanced, especially for a 35 inch curved, which comes in with 1800R curvature across the whole monitor. Backlight bleed was very well controlled and there was no visible cross hatching whatsoever with an orange background pulled up. Now, of course, what about the main hitting questions like the input lag and also the response times? Say for instance, you don't wanna use the strobing feature. Well, they've actually got six levels of overdrive built in. I found personally, if you didn't wanna use ELMB because you can't use it with overdrive, you wanna use the max level. At level five, I noticed actually no ghosting at all to my eyes and it did improve response times a lot as opposed to level zero. Also, when we're moving on to the input lag, Asus have done this really well. Now, I recently tested the ViewSonic monitors in here. They were phenomenal. They had really low input lag. Asus as well have nailed it. Extremely low input lag. I couldn't notice virtually any. I mean, the total system input lag when me testing at 1000 FPS, firing a bullet in uh, CSGO was so low. So it's good to know if you're buying a monitor like this in 2018, you're gonna be getting a very good competitive edge, at least if you've got a really good internet connection and you're playing online competitive games. They're looking at the construction and build quality of this monitor, it does have a metal-based stand, which is actually quite heavy, and it does have three prongs with two of those legs 
being longer than the third one. It's also a 100 mil height adjustable, 50 degrees swivel adjustable, and also 30 degrees tilt adjustable. However, there is no adjustments for rotation. So you are out of luck if you wanna stack them vertically. Not that you kind of would want to with a curved monitor. On the back of the monitor, there's also room for VESA mounting, though you have to take off the stand. It is tucked away behind that stand. The bezel on the monitor is very low, coming just under 10 mil. However, on the bottom, I did measure the ASUS ROG frame there for 30 mil, though that is pretty standard. I haven't seen an ultra wide monitor that has a real thin bezel on the bottom of the monitor either. Uh, now talking about the brightness and the color change settings with this monitor, the profiles out of the box are actually really handy. Uh, if you guys are like me and you love saturation, you love a really good look that's sort of out of this world, it's not realistic, uh, that's what I personally like for gaming, then set this thing to cinema mode and put on ELMB and you're gonna be having a great experience. Now the brightness settings, the max brightness I found was 300 CCD on max brightness without ELMB, but when we turn strobing on, the max brightness dropped down to 130 CCD. So for me personally, it was uh, the bare minimum at where I'd like to use a monitor. I do like to have around about 160 to 180 CCD brightness in normal operation, but 130 is doable, especially since the benefits that strobing bring to the table. Though of course with that cinema mode giving a really good look for gaming, it's not realistic if you wanna do photo editing or video editing. There is a mode called sRGB. However, when I turned this on and then I tested it with color calibration and the device, it was quite a little bit off. So it wouldn't be for someone looking to do video accurate work or photo accurate work to get those colors out of it. Or you would want to have a device to color calibrate this thing because out of the box, it was a little bit out. Though keep in mind, if you do buy a monitor that's perfectly calibrated out of the factory, you will be paying generally a lot more for that panel as in case of the 4K ViewSonic monitor that I recently reviewed, that thing costs over 1300 AUD, I believe. However, it is a godsend for 4K video editing work. The XG35 here though does have the really good customization settings and that's where we're gonna move on to now with the OSD. You've got four buttons on the side and then a directional button where you can flick through the whole menu and access all the settings. Some of the settings we spoke about already, overdrive settings, there's also picture and picture mode which will uh, put a little picture up the top from a different source if you wish it to, and you can set the size of that if you wish to too. There's also picture by picture, which if you wanna use this as essentially two monitors, even from the same graphics card with two different signals, then you can too. Uh, moving on with the OSD as well, you've got brightness, saturation, contrast controls, also full red, green, blue control from zero to 100. There's also a volume control, which relates to a headphone jack. So plugging in a pair of headphones, I did notice it was a little bit tinny. The ADC on board is not the best, but generally when you're buying a monitor, you're not buying it for sound quality as that's pretty much been the case with any monitor I've seen in my life. Though keep in mind, if you do wanna plug it up to use with Skype, it is a feature that's there. There's also besides that a USB hub, which has an additional two USB 3 ports. And from the OSD itself, you can disable these USB ports if you're not using them, which is what I've done. You can mute that onboard audio too. So ASUS do add in those options, as well as the RGB Aura Sync. You can sync that to an ASUS motherboard and then have your RGB on the back matching that of your motherboard or any RGB lighting from that motherboard itself. There's also the ability to put on the breathing effects, which I like the, just the simple cycling. It looks really nice. Uh, keep in mind the RGB on the monitor isn't super bright, so it's not really gonna stand out, but it does add to the aesthetic of the monitor itself. And also from that OSD, which is actually very good, it's so detailed, you can also do things like add a crosshair in. So if you're playing CSGO, for example, and you want to no scope, but essentially kind of cheat, then you can with this monitor by putting in a actual crosshair. Now I'm not sure about the actual official rules. I don't think you can use that in tournaments. I think it's actually banned. Uh, but since it is on the monitor itself, you're not going to get into any trouble using this at your house. Uh, there's actually two different crosshairs and also two different colors, green and red. So you can use this in any game. You can pull it up with a hotkey on the side on one of the OSD buttons. And you can also quickly select between your color modes as well. There's also the ability to save four custom profiles too, which you can easily load and save just by using the OSD menu itself. Not to mention as well, there's the ability to control the transparency of the OSD itself. So here we are now at conclusion time with the XG35VQ. And this thing here definitely 
brings something to the table. All pun intended, but what you're getting for the money, it costs 770 USD or 1050 AUD, and it is pretty much the best in class ultra wide monitor I think out there at the moment. And the reason being it has that ELMB. You switch that on, you're gonna get a very snappy picture out of this thing. You're gonna be able to track so well in fast paced motion games, but also the user modes out of the factory. Pop on cinema mode, turn the brightness up to max, and with ELMB on, since ELMB drops the brightness because it's strobing, and you're gonna get a phenomenal gaming experience. I was blown away by games that support 21 by nine. Final Fantasy 15, I'm definitely gonna be uh, making some free time to play this game on this monitor because it was so enjoyable. Now keep in mind, 21 by nine is not going to work perfectly in every single game. For instance, Dota 2, if I've got the tower in the middle of the screen and then I move it over to the left of the screen, it stretches out practically over double the size. Uh, so I'd rather play Dota 2 in 16 by nine. CSGO, however, was a game that I think they've updated the 21 by nine support. It did look a lot better than it did on 16 by nine. So games are starting in 2018 to mass support 21 by nine. So it is a very immersive experience, especially with that curvature. I'm a big fan of curved monitors when it comes to gaming. When it comes to video editing work, I prefer a flat screen. So this thing, it does give you that immersive gaming experience. And especially for the price, it is hitting hard with the features that it has. Low input lag, good response times, option to put on ELMB, free sync if you've got an AMD graphics card, and the light anti-matte coating as well, which does reflect off sunlight, but still allows colors to come through really well. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below what monitor are you currently using? Have you tried an ultra wide monitor before? Or better yet, have you tried ELMB, AKA strobing? This is my first time trying it and I absolutely love it. I'm looking forward to seeing it uh, in a lot more VA and IPS panels. I think that's where it makes the biggest difference. And also big thanks to Azus for sending this out for review. It's gonna be my new benchmark monitor and also free time gaming monitor as well. And with that said, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now, bye. Ha. <sighs> However, it isn't calibrated out of the factory. For a perfectly calibrated, calibrated. Yeah, that's the word, I guess. Calibrated is the word, I guess, now. It's sort of an unofficial word. To the right of me here, I have, <clears throat> to the right of me here, I have a On the desk here beside me, I have the ASUS XG35VQ. Now this is a 21 by nine monitor and it has a 35 inch wingspan from the diagonal to the other diagonal. 